Shepard as one of the funniest guys in the Laugh Factory who has a comedy podcast. It's called RadioTitans.com. He hosts it. So let's start clapping. Let's make some noise right now. Bring the energy up. Ready? Ready? Start clapping. Let's make some noise for Carl Koslowski, everybody. Carl Koslowski. Post. All right. We're going for Doc there. All right. Yeah, this is exciting. I'm happy to be here Saturday night. Uh, yeah, so uh, but I'm also excited to announce that I've lost 50 pounds in the last four months. Yeah. You ever notice you never get applauded for gaining 50 pounds in four months? <laughs> But I'm supposed to, my doctor says I'm supposed to lose 125 pounds. So I'm in what I call the holy crap zone now. Because everybody I know is like, holy crap, you lost 50 pounds, dude. Everybody who doesn't know me is like, holy crap, dude, you need to lose 75 pounds. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions about being fat, though. People like to call this a gut. I prefer to call it my spare tire. That way when my doctor tells me I'm morbidly obese, I just tell him I'm AAA approved. <laughs> Write that down, fat people. I, uh, I'm also narcoleptic, and uh, that's a disorder where you can fall asleep anytime, anywhere. So watch out, this could get dangerous. Uh, uh, a lot of people misunderstand uh, narcolepsy. I uh, mentioned a couple weeks ago that I was narcoleptic at a show and a chick in the second row went, Oh my God, does that mean you like to fuck dead people? <laughs> I'm like, no, that's necrophiliac. But as long as they're unconscious, who's complaining, right? That's how I roll. I, uh, yeah, being narcoleptic is uh, kind of sucks. Uh, I can't drive here in LA in the city of the, where everybody has a car. So I fell asleep at the wheel 10 years ago, so the cops don't let me drive anywhere. Uh, so I have to ride a bike, and I'm like, really? Uh, so I don't know if I feel any safer, but I guess my obituary will be a lot more entertaining for you folks to read. But uh, you know, it's also uh, weird, like sometimes I have to dress up, like tonight, you know, I put on a suit or a jacket, hop on my bike, I'm over 300 pounds. When people see me in a suit on a bike, they get the hell out of my way. Because they think I'm the world's scariest Mormon. <laughs> And the biggest, I, uh, let's see, yeah, you know, but uh, I also, I ride the bus, which is, it is every bit as horrible as he was saying, uh, and, uh, you know, it's like kind of weird, though, because, you know, it's always surprising, because I fall asleep on the bus all the time, and when I wake up, like, in commerce, instead of my home in Koreatown, it's like I've drugged, kidnapped, and abandoned myself, it's terrifying, but I also have a weird other job, though, I'm a, I'm a film critic, and that makes a whole lot of sense, right? When you when you have a sleep disorder, <laughs> sit in the dark all day, comfy chair, perfect air conditioning. Yeah, you know, it's like, well, at least I never give away the ending because I never get to the ending. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like kind of a uh, got a few other things that are kind of strange about my life. Uh, I uh, grew up in the South, and uh, that was uh, pretty rough. My I managed to escape to the big city, like here. But uh, I have a sister who has continued to move to smaller towns all the time. We started in Little Rock. She's now in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Population like 33,000, okay? And it's like, you know, she's got five kids under age 16. I just want one kid so I can drive in the carpool lane for the next 18 years. <laughs> but it's like, you know, her town is sucks though. I mean, it's like, she's married to this redneck named Roy. And like Roy, uh, like the last time I went to visit, he was like, Hey man, you want a tour of Bowling Green, Kentucky? I'm like, sure, Roy. So like 10 minutes later, we're done with the tour of Bowling Green, Kentucky. He's like, we got a Walmart and an Applebee's. What more do you need? I'm like, I don't know, man. How about a shotgun? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, my sister is very conservative, though. It's uh, kind of sad. Uh, she's actually on the school board committee to stop the gay agenda in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I'm like, really, Chris? Uh, you know, the only gay agenda in Bowling Green, Kentucky is how to get the fuck out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. <laughs> it's like, I never understand homophobia anyway. It's stupid. I mean, you know, 
I mean, sure, you know, some people act like they're more scared of gay people than they are of bees. I'm like, that makes no sense. It's like, sure, a gay guy might sting you, but at least they won't swarm. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but uh, <laughs> I'll let you think about it. Uh, that's a good visual. Um, yeah, so uh, Roy, though, he's got a really great job. Uh, you know, some people take pride in jobs that they really shouldn't be that proud of. Uh, he, he actually works for a tampon company. And the first time I met him, he gave me his business card. And he's like, check it out, bro, my business card. I'm like, okay. And it says, sales manager, U.S. Southern region. I'm like, really, Roy? The southern region for a tampon company? The joke just writes itself. <laughs> I like to fuck with him, though, especially with the recession. You know, I'm like, man, how'd you get that job? Did you have to pull any strings for it? <laughs> Don't worry, they get worse. I, uh, I'm like, hey, man, hope the economy doesn't bleed you dry. <laughs> Keep plugging, Roy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my, my, my sister, I mentioned she's uh, very conservative. And uh, after Sandy Hook, that horrible tragedy with the kids, and not to bring it down her, but that happened like two weeks before Christmas in 2012. They actually went out and bought their kids who are five kids under age 16, guns, tasers, and machetes. Because they said they had to make sure their kids were safe on the school bus. <laughs> I'm like, really? When you give a five-year-old a taser, I think they're part of the problem. <laughs> and so then my sister's like, oh, come on. you know." It's like, we got to be careful, because you never know when the government's going to take away your property. I'm like, I, I find it funny that the people who are most paranoid about the government taking away their land are the people who live in the places that nobody fucking wants. <laughs> yeah, make sure you let me know how the Battle of Bowling Green turns out. <laughs> Her kids whacking away with a machete and tasers. <laughs> sure that'll win. But uh, yeah, I gotta say though, uh, growing up in Little Rock was pretty weird though. Um, people always ask me if I ever met President Clinton. I'm like, come on, it's like asking somebody from New Jersey if they ever met Tony Soprano, right? <laughs> but I did actually meet him once uh, when I was in high school. I worked in a movie theater in a mall and uh, he was still governor. And he comes in one day in the afternoon and uh, he was by himself, no date. Uh, <laughs> he comes up to the counter and I'm like, oh, so uh, what can I get you, governor? And I realized that'd be a lot cuter if I said that with a British accent. Like, what can I get you, governor? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I said, what can I get you, Governor? He's like, I'll have a popcorn and a Coke, please. And this is all true, okay? So I was like, okay, what size, sir? And he's like, come on, man, jumbo, of course. <laughs> so I get the jumbo popcorn. I said, would you like butter on that? He goes, come on, man, do you know me at all? I'm like, okay. So I take the jumbo popcorn and put it under the butter machine. And I give it five squirts of butter, which is like the legal limit. <laughs> and I slide it over to him. He looks at it, shakes his head, and he goes, no, man. Pushes it back at me. I want you to hit it till I tell you to stop. <laughs> I felt sexually harassed. <laughs> I have a feeling I wasn't the last person he ever said that to. <laughs> uh, 10 more squirts of butter, for the record. Yeah, Bubba. So, uh, I guess before I get out of here, I want to tell you, uh, my, my folks are trying to help me lose weight, so they got me a bike last year for Christmas, and I'm like, boy, I'm making progress when uh, I'm getting the same present at age 38 that I got when I was eight. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my dad said something weird when he gave me the bike, though. He's like, now, son, uh, I want you to make sure you don't lose your balance. What he really was saying is, don't let the gravitational pull of the earth suck your fat ass into the pavement. <laughs> My mom was like, now, honey, don't be so harsh on him. And she, but instead, she said, now, Carl, just make sure your tires will support you. <laughs> These are quotes on Christmas morning. I'm like, I guess my tires have to support me because she never will. <laughs> but I can't blame her, though. My grandma's the meanest one in the family, and uh, she always wonders why I don't visit her more often. But every time I go to her house, she pulls out my high school yearbook photo from when I was skinny, and she's like, Hey, remember this guy when he used to be so handsome? And I'm like, yeah, Grandma, remember when your breasts weren't part of your waistline? <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, folks. You've been great. I'm Carl Foster. <laughs>